Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our 2012 Lincoln MKT, the one that took out our deer. Now we cut up our parts car, so if you want to see that video, links in the description along with the first video if you haven't seen this or it doesn't look familiar to you. So let's take all of our parts car parts and, well, get them on this one. So we're going to grind off our fender bracket here, bend it out of our way so we can see our welds, and we'll grind it off with our die grinder, only because I need to upset the tool experts. And we're starting off this video strong. Grind those off of there and then we'll just wiggle it off, toss that in a pile. Then we'll grind what's left of the spot welds flat, head over to the other side of our bracket and grind those two welds out. Then we'll hammer this one off. It wasn't enough to bend it off, so we'll have to use the scraper. Grind these flat. And we'll Test fit our new bracket, make sure it sits in there. I did scribe all the lines in there for where our new bracket's gonna line up. There's also some dimples in there, but our scribe lines are just perfectly in the same spot. Now we're gonna grind off this lower bracket. A couple spot welds on the front we can get right to. We'll bring out our favorite tool, and we'll trim the rest of this out of our way so we can get to the spot welds in the back. Kind of fold it over. We'll just trim the front of it out. Some of these spot welds are breaking as we go. And hammer a few of them out of there. And our piece is free. Still got that back piece to grind off. Now we can start on our front piece. We'll have to drill all of our spot welds out of this one. And start hammering it out of there. And then we're gonna Call up our all new welding gnome and let him go ahead and weld all these brackets in. Pretty easy. Everything's already scribed, so all he has to do is line up the lines and weld it in. So, as fast as I was pulling the parts off of our parts car, our painting gnome was getting them all scuffed down and sanded so he could get them painted up. So, now all our paint is dry on our parts, it's time to start putting some of them in. We're going to put our hood hinge bracket back in here on the back of our cowl. And then we can put our hood hinge on it. We're gonna line up all the old marks for where the bolts go and see how close that gets us. Since nothing should have moved, everything should line up pretty close. Of course, that hood hinge bracket does move around. But it gives us a place to start. So our marks are lined up. We'll tighten it down to manufacturer specs, of course. Now we'll go over to the other side. This side isn't quite as much fun. Unbolt our bracket and our hinge. This one has an extra bend in it that it's not supposed to have. So it goes in a pile. Now we'll use a ratcheting wrench to get to those last two bolts that are hidden underneath the fender. A lot easier than taking the fender off, especially since the back of it's glued on there. And I don't want to mess with that. Primarily because the glue to glue it on is quite expensive. So if I can avoid it, I will. You get the hard to get bolt out. This is behind the little perch for the fender bolt. And we got it out of there. Didn't drop it in Narnia. And our bracket's free. And put our new bracket in there. it in under the fender. Then we're going to start all of our bolts before we tighten any of them down. It helps to have swivel joints in your fingers if you're ever going to be a mechanic to try to get some of these bolts in that engineers designed for us. So once we got them all started, we can tighten them down. Our ratcheting wrench now identifies as a torque wrench, so we'll tighten those up to manufacturer specs. Click. Tighten up the other one in the back. Then we can finally use some power tools to put our fender bolt in and tighten that front one up. Drop our hood hinge in here and bolt that down. Line up our marks and tighten the back bolt down. Put our 
foam back underneath there. And now we can put our hood on. Don't have to worry about breaking the windshield. It's already broken. It's pretty easy to put this hood on by yourself. It's pretty light. It's made out of aluminum. Just kind of set it in place, lift it up. And we can get our bolt started with one hand and hold the hood with the other. Eventually, after we get the hood bolted in and lined up, we can connect the lift struts and then we can still hold the hood up by hand because they don't work. And that's not part of the accident. Um, the parts car ones also didn't work. So Ford clearly has a problem with their lift struts. They can't hold up an aluminum hood. And there's two of them. So, but at least they glued the fenders on. Them, so they got that going. For them. Line up our hinge on the other side. These are not adjustable. There's a very small amount of adjustment from the hood to the hood hinge. So all the adjustment is in the bottom of the hinge. So we can just tighten these up. And now we gotta get our bucket out of there. Oh darn, I further broke the broken windshield. And we'll throw our fender up on the other side. Our painting gnome hasn't been here yet but I want to get everything lined up in case we need to move anything. Our welding gnome was here. So we welded our brackets on. We'll just test fitting our fender right now. Get behind the on the bottom. Put the bolt in there. Put the bolts in the bottom of the fender. Oh, hey, look, Mr. Spotty showed up and find his way out of the pile. Couple bolts in the back. We'll leave that other one up the top off. Unless something doesn't line up and we need to put it in there. But if everything lines up, we're just test fitting it, making sure our gaps are right. It should be. But I did find out now that they're not. Tighten everything up. Close our hood and see if our struggle is over or just beginning. There's no radiator support in there, so the rubber baby buggy bumpers don't touch anything. So I do have to hold the hood in place. And that gap is good. And this gap is good. And this gap is good. At least we'll have three good gaps on this vehicle. The rest of the gaps are kind of all willy-nilly. Some of it from Ford, some of it from the some of these that have been there before. But it all adds up to a bunch of gaps that aren't the same. So somebody's going to know somebody's been here before when the front end lines up. Now we can unbolt our fender so that it's out of our way for our painting note. And before he gets into it, we're going to change this engine mount. Little bracket on the top. That's really all that was holding it together. Now we can unbolt it from the engine side. Put a bunch of studs on there. So the engine will drop down, except I have a pry bar underneath the compressor. And I'm leaning on it with one foot to kind of hold it up a little bit. I would put a block of wood under the engine and lift it, except there's an undercover that covers up the whole bottom of the engine, and I didn't feel like having to lift the thing way up in the air to get that thing off of there. So I'm just kind of prying it up there. And now we're trying to wiggle the engine mount now. It doesn't really want to come out because a couple of those studs on the engine are bent a little bit. Not enough to be a problem, just enough to make this a pain and make me have to be in your way so you can't see what I'm doing. We'll pry the rest of this out of there. And there's our two-piece engine mount. 
built Ford tough. In the pile. And we got our new engine mount from our parts car. We'll drop this in here. We're supposed to be able to drop it in. We get our hammer, our pointy one. Sorry, tool experts. I use what's available at arm's reach. Sorry, I'm in the way. Put more hammering. This is secret stuff. You can't see. I'll be out of your way in a second. Once we got it down there, we can start our nuts on the studs. And then tighten it up to draw the engine up. You do this side first. And it'll sit on the frame rail, and then we can just slide it back and forth on the frame rail to line up the bolts that hold it into the frame rail. Now we're going to do just that. We're going to pry the engine forward to get the holes that are in our mount to line up with the holes that our bolts are going to go into in the frame rail. Once they're lined up, just thread our bolts in. A little more prying. And we'll put our little bracket back in there. I guess that's the bracket that's supposed to hold the engine in when the mount itself breaks because that's what it was doing. So we'll put it back in there. Man, those engineers think of everything. I guess it was too hard to build one that just didn't break in the first place. We'll bolt everything down. And we'll head over to our valve cover. Pop all the connectors off of our coils. Well, that one's already disconnected. Well, halfway. Part of our coil is still in our plug. We'll worry about that later. Pry off the last piece of the engine cover. And pull our lifting eye out of there. And bolt our coils. Pop those out of there. And then they're going in the pile. Pry off our wiring harness. Throw Mr. Spotty on the floor. Spin off the plastic stud for our engine cover and then start unbolting our valve cover. Put the studs all the way around. Now we can start prying our valve cover off of there. Work our way around. It likes to hang on to the VVT solenoid and all the coil tubes. So you gotta kinda pull it straight up, otherwise it binds up in there. It's even harder to get off. And at the same time, we managed to pull our dipstick out of there that was broken off flush. We're going to unbolt our cam actuator solenoid and pop that out of there. We got a new one. It's a little different. This one has a plug on it. Pile. We'll try it anyway. Snap it in there. And bolt it down to manufacturer specs. One and a half Ugga Duggas. Now we're going to change all our gaskets on our valve cover. This is our parts car valve cover. To get the little grommets off the bolts, it's a lot easier to just take a razor blade, slice them, then put the little grommet in the back of a socket and push the thing through there. Pop the next one out of there. Cut our old gasket off. I use the dullest razor blade I can find. Uh, you might want to use a sharp one, it works better. But I don't have that kind of money. Push our stud back through this grommet. And pop our grommet in the valve cover. And do that about, I don't know, 10 times. Then we're going to put a little RTV silicone where the timing cover meets the head. Just to make sure we don't have any leaks. And Clean Freaks Rejoice. I cleaned all the milkshake out of our valve cover. And the inside of this engine was actually very clean. These people do keep up with their oil changes. It's nice to see. Instead of the sludge I usually see. Like in the Kia. We'll line everything up. I did put a little oil on all of the gaskets to help them slide over the tubes so we don't tear them up. Since they are brand new, we changed every gasket that was in this valve cover because it all came in the kit. 
we'll thread all of our studs in by hand, make sure that they aren't cocked in there or anything. Don't always go in there straight. And once we have them all in a few turns, make sure we're not going to cross thread them. You can go ahead and tighten them down with a fork wrench identifying impact. We're just going to snug them up. We'll actually torque them down later. Now we'll throw our wiring harness back on, flip it into all the studs, drop our coils in. A couple of these came from the parts car. I chose the new one. Bolt those in. Then we can bolt our little plastic stud to our other stud. That's what the engine cover holds on to. And start plugging in our coils. First we have to remove part of our old coil from that plug. Now we can install our new oxygen sensor. I opted for the new one, didn't want to use the parts car one. We'll tighten it down. Probably could have gotten an oxygen sensor socket, but that was further away than the wrench was. so. That's what we're going to go with. Click. Click. Always double check your torque settings. Plug our plug in. Now we can bolt in our engine lifting eye. This is a very important piece of any Ford engine because, well, eventually someone's going to have to change it it's a Ford. Now we'll install our dipstick and check the oil. Only a quart low. It's all over the shop. And now we can bolt in our overflow bottle. I have a supervisor. The Pizza K9 came to watch. Make sure I'm doing this right. And the power steering reservoir clips into the back of the overflow bottle. And we'll bolt in our accumulator. The accumulator was broken, at least the bracket was. Uh, the overflow bottle and the power steering reservoir we just took out of the way so the painting gnome could paint all of our apron and our rail and our lower rail. So now that he's done all that, we can just throw it all back together. And we have a broken AC sensor. We'll spin that off of there. Just grabbed one off the parts car, it was right there. If it turns out to be bad, it's not that hard to change. Apparently the supervisor thought I was taking an unauthorized break and had to go see where I went. Turns out I was working, so she can go back to her office and continue writing up all the safety violations I've committed. And we'll tighten our sensor down to manufacturer specs with our special sensor wrench. We can put our washer bottle back in. We'll unclip our hoses that we had clipped in there so they didn't leak all over the place. Slide it onto the studs. We'll put our bolt in the front. Then we're going to put some cavity wax on the inside of those welds. We did prime them, but we want to make sure that we do wax the inside of it. You don't want them rusting out. Supervisor inspecting my work too. Now we can throw our bumper reinforcement back up there. It was nice of the last guys to now weld it up for us so we could take it down easily. We'll bolt it in. Tighten it all down after we started all our bolts. 
And we could put our airbag sensor back in our mount. It was completely crushed. We ended up using the one out of the parts car. Another bonus. Now we can throw our fender on, hopefully for the last time. Let open the door to slide that last tab up there inside the door. Get a couple bolts in it so it doesn't end up on the floor. This time we're going to put all of our bolts in. We'll get them all started before we start tightening things up. Bolt in the back of our fender. Get the gaps right. We'll bolt in the top of the fender and the front. Now we're going to set our radiator support in here. We don't want the hood falling down. We need the rubber baby buggy bumpers to have a place to sit. So we're just going to set this in there for now so that the painting gnome can close the hood and paint everything. There's also a little body work to be done on the edge of the fender. So we're going to leave that for the body work gnome, but he needs the hood to be lined up so that we can get his lines right. So we're just going to throw the two bolts in the top. We're not going to worry about the front on the lower brackets. We'll make sure they line up, but we don't need them for right now. These two will hold the hood. And our gaps are okay. We'll turn it over to the bodywork gnome. Now I'm going to do a little bodywork myself. We're going to remove this clear coat. This takes a little air. Turns out when they repainted it, they uh, didn't do such a good job. Maybe they let it sit for too long before they put the clear on. Maybe cheap materials. I don't know. But instead of sanding it all off, we're just going to take a blow gun. We're going to blow most of it off. I quickly lost interest in this, so whatever I didn't get with the blow gun, the painting gnome actually used a razor blade to scrape the rest of it off. Then we reprimed the whole hood so that we don't have a problem with our new paint. Now we need to take our passenger door apart so that the painting gnome can paint it. So there's a couple screws in the bottom. One more back here somewhere. Looks like it could be inside that reflector. I'm learning here. You always want to know how I know how to take these doors apart. Oh, you're going to learn as I do. I've never taken one apart. Don't read the directions. I hate reading. So we just figure it out. We found a secret screw in there. So we'll pull that out of there. And there's one behind the handle, pretty common place. Not really a secret, everybody knows about those. And there's a cover. It looks like it would pop off and there'd be screws behind it. And there are those screws out of there and pull our door panel off. But wait, there's more. There's a little cap in the back. Looks like it could be hiding another screw. We'll pop the cap open. Sure enough, there's another screw in there. Lord was trying to be sneaky. I think we got them all this time. Disconnect our cables, a couple wiring harnesses. We'll pop our switch out of there. It's easier to disconnect if we take it out. And our door panel is off. Now we can pull the trim piece around the top off. Little Christmas trees on the bottom. And it just snaps off of there. One clip that's two-sided taped on. Pop that out of the door, and we're going to have to throw some more two-sided tape on there. 
And we can unplug our mirror, pull off this nifty water barrier, just snaps in there. We got Tupperware lid. Wish they used all water barriers like that. There's a wiring harness clip. Pry that out of there. And we can unbolt the mirror. You can get to two of the nuts that are on the studs. But that third nut is hidden behind the door glass, and I don't really want to take the door glass out. So we'll just stick an open end wrench up there. We'll break that nut loose, which happens to be the rustiest and tightest one of them all. And then once we got it loose, we'll spin it off of there. And with any luck, we won't drop the nut down in Narnia or the wrench. Pour the mirror on the floor. We got them all out of there. We'll fish the wire out. It seems to want to snag on everything. It goes around the window channel. So you got to kind of fish it around the window channel and then through the hole. There we go. Now we can pull our lower door molding off. It's just got the clips that you just squeeze on each side and they pop out. So we'll just unclip those. And we'll hammer the molding back and unclip it. We had to undo the top ones. The bottom ones, all the clips go in in the same order. So if you hammer it back, it unclips. But there were a few on the top that went in in the other direction. So if we were to do that, you'd break some of them and not all of them. So the bottom one, we'll just hammer it off of there and then we'll go back and take all those clips out of the door later when the molding is out of our way, stick them back in the molding like we're doing with the top right now and it'll be ready to go on after it's painted. We'll pull our door handle off, pull the little plug out of there, then loosen up the screw that holds the cap on, pop our cap off of there, slide our door handle back, We'll take our belt molding off, a little tab in the back, try not to break it, we'll reach in there with a pick. The rest of the clips pop right off, and there's one more tab in the front we're going to try and save. And we're good. No casualties. Door door stripped down and ready to go. Now we're going to strip down the fender on the driver's side. We pull the lower molding off the back. You can see the little test panels the painting gnome was using to figure out how many coats of pearl it's going to take. Pop the clips off of our molding. We just push the molding off the bottom clip and put the clip back in. Then we'll pull the wheel liner forward and clean out the compost bin that's developing behind the fender, which I'm not going to show you because I don't want the clean freaks to think I have joined their cult. So that's as far as we're going to go on our Lincoln for today. It's in the paint room, so as soon as the painting gnome does his job, I can throw it all back together and hopefully get it out on the road. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate.